Yes. Were you in the hospital? No, no. But every time I got up to do something, I, I, I thought I was better, and then I ended up being sick. Oh. Okay, now we're straight. Did, so they thought you had cancer or something, right? No. What was it? I, I had a biopsy. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so you're fine. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad. Ready? Looks good. Amazing. All right. Uh, we're going to do the countdown in about 30 seconds. All right. All right. Joel's going to point at you. All right. I can't see him. Where's your boo, Joel? Huh? Where's your boo? No, you're too late. Oh, man. You sad. Beta. <laughs> Beta Bell. <laughs> He's sad because his boo is not here. You know that's Beta. <laughs> Isn't that Beta? Who are you saying? Where am I? What's that? Is that Beta? You know what it means to be Beta? Mm -mm. You never heard that? No. Are you married? I am. He's right behind me. Is he Beta or Alpha? He's the boss? Yeah. Alpha male. That's good. Slight delay because of uh, audio issues. Oh my God. <laughs> we black, we slow. <laughs> so where are you from? Las Vegas. Really? Welcome. How did you hear about us? We are always, I hear your voice in our home almost on the daily. My husband. Oh, all right, <laughs> all right. Thank you, man. Um, what do you think about what we do? I think it's beautiful. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Right on. And thank you, man. Has it been helpful to you? Pardon? Has it, this show been helpful for you? Extremely helpful, actually. Yeah. Okay. Right on. I have a sister to live up there. I, yeah, where are you going to change this town? <laughs> I have a sister to live in Vegas. My older sister. But younger than me. Yeah. You know how the mothers like to follow the kids around, right? Really? You like it? I don't like trees anyway. I think uh, black people don't like trees and dogs. And <laughs> huh? What? Don't like what? Swimming. I used to like swimming growing up, but I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I didn't like it anymore once I moved out here. But black people don't like dogs and trees. Much better. 
Uh, we, at one time, we didn't have any trees in the bond home for boys. And Francisco, a Mexican, he went over there and planted a whole bunch of trees. I'm like, <laughs> you're not Mexican. Okay, good morning. Welcome to church. Sorry for, for being late. But we're black. We can't help it. So whatever questions or comments you have, get them ready, all right? We'll get to them. And good morning again, everybody here. Thank you all for coming. I absolutely appreciate it. Before I get rolling, I got to tell you that lock your door. You heard of lock your door, right? Mm -hmm. they, uh, his wife had the baby yesterday. Yeah. They had their second child, boy. And seven pounds, I think. So congratulations, Lock Your Door, and Miss Lock Your Door. That's amazing. You got to make a bunch of white babies. Do you guys have children? We have, we have a step, I have a stepdaughter. Oh, okay. Y'all need to have more. <laughs> okay. You guys are white, right? Yeah. Have a whole bunch of white babies. Okay. All right. So get busy, Mr. Husband. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any questions or comments for me at all? Anybody have anything you want to ask me, something you're dealing with, or anything? What about mixed babies? What about no more mixed babies? <laughs> Just white babies. Are you thinking of making mixed babies? Yeah. So. Your wife is mixed? No. Well, how are you going to make a mixed baby? Well, she's, she's, she's Ecuadorian. Oh, I see. No Ecuadorian babies. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. Uh, or one. <laughs> uh uh. <laughs> not, not, not too many, but just one. All right. We let you have one. <laughs> Thank you. Just one. Uh, so, I don't know if some of you remember, uh, about a month ago, give or take, there was this guy here from Europe or somewhere, a foreigner, and right at the end of the meeting, he said, Oh, I'll work you out, I'll get you in shape. Do you remember that? He said he was going to work me out here. Uh, he's a bodybuilder kind of a guy. And I said, all right. He's like, I'll do it at no cost. Man, I'd rather than he charge me. Because he is working me like not going off. I feel like he's my master and I'm the slave again. <laughs> I'd rather be picking cotton. <laughs> He is rough, and he want hate so bad. He's like, where's hate today? He's like, hate me, boy. I'm like, hate ain't coming. <laughs> the last thing hate want to do is work out. But he worked me out. We do arms and chest and legs. And uh, we did legs this week. I think it was like Wednesday. Or I, and so I had to go up to Oakland last, yesterday to speak. I wanted to cuss. I was so sore. Ooh, I was like, oh, oh. And they wanted to go out to eat up in Oakland. I'm like, I'm not hungry. <laughs> they wanted to move. I'm like, I could hardly move. And he like, and there he is right there in case y'all want to kill him. He like find muscles I didn't know I had. Really. And he's a I mean, the best. And uh, you have a, a tournament coming up, right? Uh, no, not until, um, sorry. Not until uh, May 29, 2020. Yeah. Oh, 2020 is going to be a good year. It is? Oh, yeah. I'm going to win, and the great White Hope's going to win. Oh, okay. <laughs> right on. And we, Joel, want to work out. Like, can I go work out with y'all? Yeah. And I told him about it. He going to kill you, Joel. We got to drag Joel out of the gym. Because he's rough, man. When we go to the gym, we go to war. I'm telling you, it's amazing. But he's amazing, folks. He worked you like a slave. I call him massa. Jesse, you know, you train harder than just about anyone I've met. And uh, you never say no. 
No, I love it. Yeah, I love working out. And yeah, let me tell amazing. you, this guy, for his age, is unbelievable. That's amazing. Truly, it's inspiring to train you, Jesse. That's from working in the cotton fields. <laughs> you tough. tough. Plowing the mule and all that. Yeah, very tough. And so last night we were up in, uh, you got to get Nick. Last night we were up in uh, I only Oakland. train uh, alpha males. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday we were up in Oakland, so uh, I was doing some push-ups. And Nick saw me doing these push-ups, and all of a sudden he got to do push-ups, right? <laughs> I looked around, and Nick was doing push-ups. I'm like, what the? Wow. He was like a little jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> you know how your back's supposed to be straight? And this part is supposed to go down, and only this supposed to be up. I mean, going up and down. Everything was going down. <laughs> I swear, I could have sworn I was straight. I could have sworn I was straight. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Nick need help bad. He need Jesus and you. It sounds, sounds like he's a beta male. <laughs> <laughs> and so he managed, I showed him the right way to do it. He managed one push up, and now he's sore. Hey, I'm gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> for one push up. So anyway, I was up in uh, Fremont yesterday speaking at the Contest of Character conference. And they're kind of happening across the country. Really good stuff. But I realized something, and so I want to ask you guys this before I tell you what I, why I ask. Um, I want to know what do you believe in? What do you believe in? All right? Just think about that. What do you believe in? It's such a good question. Uh, what do you believe in, Kelly? I see you thinking of, now. In terms of uh, <laughs> anything, or what do you what do you believe in? Well, I believe in God. Um, I believe, uh, I don't know. I, I, this is sort of a trick question. I, I it's a know. trick question. Um, in terms of, in terms of what? What do you believe in? What do I believe in? Uh, I believe, believe in forgiveness. Um, I, I believe, I don't know. <laughs> you like, I don't know. Yeah. What do you believe in? When you asked the question, the, when you asked the question, the first word that popped in my mind was the word love. You believe in love. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Uh, and welcome. I know it's your first time. Any questions about anything? No, I'm no. just happy to be here. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Okay. What do you believe in? The first thing I thought of was I believe in having faith, the unknown. You What's believe in having faith, faith of the unknown? Yeah. Yes. Okay. How about you? God. You believe in God? God, faith, and moral values. Amazing. Uh, right here, the black shirt. What do you believe in? Um, I guess, uh, well, I, I also believe in God. I believe in... Um, and being a moral person in my community and being a, an honorable man to my family. Is this your first time here? Yes. Um, what's your first name? Eladio. I should not have asked. <laughs> and the way I'm going to repeat that. Eladio. Malavi? Eladio. Eladio. Uh -huh. Oh, I said it. <laughs> Any questions for me? No. Um, how do you know you believe in God? Um, I believe in I believe that something created everything that we see. Do you, that, that something created it? Uh, do you, are you a flat earther? No. You're not? No. You don't believe the earth is flat? No. Oh, okay. Good. Well, not good, but okay. <laughs> um, in the pink shirt, what do you believe in? Or oh, I guess a pink. Is your shirt pink? I think it's red. Oh, okay. I think it's pink. Oh, man, it's pink. Sad. It looked pink to me. Man, I thought it was red. I'm not a color guy. I almost failed out of kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you believe in? 
God, myself, and nothing else. Okay. How about you, Derek? Doing right and being right. Isn't this an interesting question? All of a sudden, now you got to think about it. And no one never paused to think, what do I believe in? Um, how about you, Francisco? Uh, I used to believe in a lot of things, and now I believe just in a few. You know, it's my... Believe in what? Um, you know, God and, you know, that kind of thing. I used to believe in a lot, but not anymore. <clears throat> What do you believe in? Uh, wait for the mic, yeah. Uh, first and foremost, God, um, having faith in God, um, asking for uh, guidance from Him for the right things, um, and trying to do the right thing myself. He be, so. He's always yelling beta at him. He'll look over and see people walking around and something look weird. He go, beta! <laughs> be like real loud. Beta! <laughs> I thrive on controversy. <laughs> you should. Oh, I'm telling you. I should wear a gum guard in the gym just in case, right? Lose <laughs> any teeth. I'm telling you. Yep. What do you believe in? Uh, the word that came to my mind when you asked that was truth. In truth? Just truth, yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. How about you? In the other Pete shirt. Oh, this is not pink, man. This is red. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with pink. No, it's a nice color. Is that red? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I got it at Target, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what do you believe in? Uh, well, I like the love answer. I mean, I don't know if I believe in love, but that, that makes sense to me because that seems to, like, uh, that seems to, like, um, see the permeate everything, you know? And uh, I was thinking that song, I Believe in You and Me. You know, this, <laughs> I believe in you and me. You know, that uh, kind I mean, of stuff. Yeah. But that's about it. I like. Daniel, you know. what do you believe in? Prayer. You believe in prayer? All right. Oh, I got to ask Joe L. He's black. <laughs> what do you believe in, Joe? Uh, I don't know. I have to think about it. You don't know. I what don't you, even know quite. I would Kelly. I don't even know quite what you mean by it. Um, I, I, so I have to think about it. it. Is it not clear what I'm asking? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, I didn't know it was a complicated question. What do you <laughs> believe in? I have to think. Isn't that like an easy question to think? Yeah, sure. So what? What do you believe in? Um, I believe in myself, the responsibility of myself. Oh, okay. How about, how about you? Hmm. Um, I believe in being of love and doing what's right. You believe in being of love and doing what's right. How about you? Uh, someone over there said truth. I think... I think that's a good one. I, I believe in the truth, so whatever, you know, even if you don't like hearing it, I think uh, the truth is, is what I believe in. It's what I'm after. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I got to ask you a question. Um, do you believe that if you confess Jesus with your mouth, no, if you do you believe that Jesus died, and if you confess it with your mouth, you, you're saved? Something like that. I think that's a process um, because there's more to that. And how does it go? I want to make sure I say it in the right way. Okay. Once you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you repent and you turn from your sins, you turn from your wicked ways, you're going to seek the truth. What is, what is truth? You know, you have to ask yourself. You know? No, I'm asking you, do you believe that when the preachers say, if you believe Jesus died for you, your Lord and Savior, you shall be born. You should, something like that, right? Am I right? How does it go? Yeah. Do you know how it goes? Yeah, like the sinner's prayer. You know how to preach it? The sinner's prayer, they said, like, if you just say it, state it, and then that's it. You're right, safe. you're born again, right? Right. It, it, you believe that? I believe it, but I know there's more to it, though. There's, but there's you believe it. it. You, yes. Do you think, you, what more do you think is to that? 
Well, I mean, you have to, when you seek the truth, you, you know, you're going you're gonna to seek faith. So when you go to a church and you believe what the, what the pastor is saying, um, hearing, hearing comes from the word of God. So you're going to build up your faith and then you're going to, you know, you're going to want more. You're going to want more of him to de decrease less of ourselves. But so. you do, but when the preachers say, all those who believe that Jesus died for you, were born again, I mean, raised from the dead, and you confess that, you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, you can be saved, right? Is that how it goes? You're, you're saved. Do you believe that? Yes. You do believe it. And yes. why do you believe that? Well, if you look at the thief in the cross, when he um, believed in, in Jesus, when he was on the cross, you know, he believed in, in uh, Jesus, and Jesus looked at him, he had faith. So he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. But he didn't confess Jesus died and rose from the cross. No, but he believed in, in Jesus that he was a Messiah. Right. But... He didn't, no one said to him, do you believe Jesus died and rose from the cross? If you do, come on down, you're saved. No, he didn't doubt it. Uh, okay. You say you believe that? Believe that? Uh-huh. That you believe if saved. Jesus died, when they tell you that Jesus died for you and rose, how many people believe that, that you could be saved by believing that? Oh, okay. Uh, don't be scared. We are fellowshipping. It's relax. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> My heart's pumping. Justin always tell me, relax, breathe. It's just, a, it's not a test. We're not in competition. We're fellowshipping. All right, so everybody relax. I feel tense in this room. It's not a test. You don't get an F or anything. We're fellowshipping. We're edifying one another. All right? All right. Whew. All right. Um, so t tell me, you believe that, right? Yeah. Well, how does it go? Like this gentleman said, there, there uh, is a process that happens. No, no, no. When the preacher says, what does he say? Yeah, he says, uh, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, um, then you will be saved. All right. Essentially. And, and confess with your mouth and believe and in your heart, right? Confess with your mouth that, yeah. Jesus and so you heard that at church one many, day. Many, many times. And then did you go down and you were saved? Um... I have done that before. And so when I was heard, like real small, little you heard child. the preacher say, "If you believe this, come on down and you say, right?" Yeah, yeah. Make an open profession of your faith. Right, and you believe that uh, at the time. What do you mean, believe that? Like, yeah, I, I, I believe that. Um, just relax and just say yes. <laughs> I'm relaxed. It's not a test, really. We're just fellowship. We're gonna all get some understanding. That's all it is. We are edifying one another. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm relaxed. Okay, so when the preacher said it, you believed it, and you went down to the front, right? Sure. And what happened when you went down front? You s say the words. They pray for you. Um, they're, uh, they can repeat. You know, they can say, like, you can repeat after me this prayer. Or, right. And they just essentially let you know what you're doing. And you believed, and were you saved? Uh, yeah. And then, at, as a result of getting saved, what happened? <laughs> um, <laughs> Why are you laughing? Somebody said magic over there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, as a result of saying those words, yeah. nothing really to, like... Were you saved? I wasn't... Uh, was I saved? Uh, the Bible says that if you believe... In Jesus Christ, that you will be saved. And were you saved? Yes. You will be saved, or were you saved? I was saved. You were saved right then and there, or are you going to be saved after you die? No, 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 you're saved. Right then and there? Sure, yeah. And were you saved? In a way, yeah. From what? It's the beginning. I'm sorry? Saved from the fallen state, you know, like you described. What were you saved from? Let's say you never I was like heard a of a child, child state. And I wasn't but, really hey, like... Hey, just for a moment. I'm yeah. trying to make a point. Okay. So at, don't act like you ever heard of the father state. What were you saved from when you believed and did that? Hell. You were saved from Eternity hell. Eternity and hell. After you die or while you live? Both. 
you were saved from hell while you were living? Yeah. And so you had no more hell after that? No, I, I experienced some hell on earth. So you were not saved from it on earth? No, that's not true. I'm asking you. Christians can backslide and stuff. No, no, I'm asking you. Once you went down and you accepted Jesus, you Lord and Savior, yeah. you were saved from hell on earth, but yet you say you caught hell. Sometimes, because sin gets in the way. And so, oh, but you were still sinning? Yeah, I was. Oh, okay, so you weren't saved from sin. No, nah, I didn't really understand what everything meant. Oh, okay. Have you point. done that since being an adult? Have I what? Gone down to the... Nah. And accept nah. Jesus, Lord, and Savior. Nah. Oh, okay. This is so tough. <laughs> it's like I'm pulling teeth right now. And I thought for sure you were going to say, yeah, you say not that. But maybe not. <laughs> yes, James. <clears throat> you, I saw your hand. Oh, I mean, I was just raising my hand because I know the line. That if you confess with oh. your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Dave's a little homemade Christian. <laughs> it, was, it was bothering me that it never got out <laughs> normal. <laughs> and so, do you, what do you believe, James? What do I believe or what do I believe in? Ooh. What do you believe? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. How come you're so tough? But it is, that's an honest headache. answer. What? I said that's an honest answer. I know, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, at least you're honest. But I'm surprised because you're a little homemade Christian. <laughs> Meaning that he went to homeschool Christian stuff. Right. Yeah. Is this a hard question? I think it's true. Can you be more specific in what you're... Yeah. What point are you trying to make? I can uh, be more specific. <laughs> what do you believe? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, uh, Anybody responding online, Jay? Uh, not that I've seen. Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. I was just curious. Um, I've heard a lot of people say I believe in God. And is there a difference between someone saying I believe, or what is the difference between someone saying I believe in God and someone saying I believe Jesus is the Son of God? What do you believe? I believe Jesus is the Son of God. And why do you believe that? Uh, just that's... I don't, I don't think it's... No wonder Satan is taking over our world. <laughs> what? It's just uh, something that I know. I don't think it's something that was taught or anything. No one ever taught you that? Well, I mean, it's been talked about and tried to be taught, but I think at a certain point we've had this one discussion before where... Um, it was the Matthew verse where Peter or Jesus asked Peter about what do people say about me and how did you describe? So right. that's one of the things that I'd been reflecting on the past month or so. And I had an interesting discussion with somebody and I asked somebody else about, you know, what do you believe about religion? And he was just like, his immediate thing was, I believe Jesus is the son of God. It was not, I believe in God. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I was like, whoa, that's very direct and to the point. So you, so when I ask you what you believe, you say you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Oh, okay. What do you believe? Well, you had time to think about it now. We've gone around the room. Yeah, that's what I was trying not to do. But when you first asked that, I, I, what popped into my mind was God. Um, you believe in God. But then I started, what, I started thinking what? about it. And I believe in a lot of things. Uh, but I would say, yeah, truth. God. Okay. Yep. This is so good. Really, it's mind blowing. Um, let me ask the couple that's about to have a baby. Are you gonna have your baby today while here? She's all, she's almost there. <laughs> Where's the baby do? Well, it's anytime now. Oh. Ooh, we have a nurse in the house. <laughs> she's uh, but like 37 and a half weeks. The baby's due December 4th, but really he can come any moment now. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. That's a Jesus baby. Yeah. What do you believe? I believe we're made in the image of God. Okay. And, and let me ask you, and what? And that, well, that he made us for a specific purpose to kind of, I believe this life is like a... Why do you believe all that? Why? Uh -huh. I don't know. It just makes sense to me. Like, it's not an intellectual sense. It's not an emotional sense. It's somewhere in between. It's just like, 
it clicks in the soul. Okay. That's the best way I can describe it. How about you? What do you believe? That we are the son of God. That you're the son of God? Yes. And you're about to have a baby? And I am going to have a baby. <laughs> I never heard the son of God having a baby. <laughs> daughter. Oh, daughter? Oh, yeah. Sorry. sorry. Still working on my English. <laughs> no, I got you. I'm just messing. <laughs> uh, the last person I want to ask is Esteban. I got to ask Esteban. Uh, Esteban used to be a street preacher. <laughs> Esteban, what do you believe? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Why don't you know? Is it because I asked the question? No, it seems like thinking about it only kind of confuses me. You know, it's just like um, when I think about it, like everything kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? Anything could make sense. Like an idea that comes into my mind kind of makes sense. So right now you don't know what you believe? Yeah. Have you ever gone through this thing where it says, at church, if you believe Jesus, your Lord, Jesus died, and whatever uh, James said, mm -hmm. and you went down to the front of the church and accepted Jesus? Yeah, I've done that before. Actually. As an adult? Uh, three years ago. And what happened? He's uh, 22 now. 23. So what? 23. He always said that. When I, that's why I said 22, because I knew he was going to correct it. Young people want to be old, old people want to be young. Um, and so you went down and accepted Jesus, your Lord and Savior, because you believe he died for you and rose again, right? Well, um, it was like my first time talking to Christians. You know, I wasn't a Christian, and they were telling me, like, you have to accept it so you can be saved. And I'm like, um, I told them, like, oh, I don't want to do it. Because, <laughs> you know, i got to think about it. It's not something I can do. He told them I don't want to do it. Can you imagine being at the church and the preacher saying, come on down, you're like, I don't want to do it. And they made you do it? Yeah, like... Uh, oh, they made you accept it? Like, I was just like, um, they're like, oh, you don't know what's going to happen. You can die like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> on the way home. I don't so know I got a little funny. bit scared. What? I got a little bit scared. You know, they're like, you can go home and then you can die. You know, you can get... Something can happen to you and then you're not going to be saved. So I just kind of said it. Because I was a bit scared. So they scared you. You went down and said, oh, I believe. Yeah. Amazing. Basically. And did anything change? No. Oh. Nothing. So how did you become a street preacher? Um, I guess I just kind of liked the people. You know, they were friendly. They were kind of helping me out, you know, tell me the truth. Oh, okay. All right. Interesting. Yes, James. And then I'll tell you why I asked the question. So y'all can relax. Oh, okay. Yeah, hold on one minute. Let me just take James. Yes, James. You can come here, Mark. I have some questions from, well, I have some answers for these, from these. What do you believe? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Terry Bale says, I believe God is the embodiment of all that he created. God is all and God is pure. An example is his son. God is the spirit within us. God is the creator. Amazing. And then the great That's white... a lot of belief, huh? Yeah, it's... You gotta believe all that. No, I'm kidding. The great white bear says, I believe in hard work pays off. Okay. Here. That's it. Uh, how many say they believe in God? Who said that? Oh, okay. Uh, you had another one you want to add? Okay. Yes, just to your second question. I believe when you get saved, uh, it's like, I like my analogies. So I, I feel like it's like buying the gym membership. You got the membership, but you got to go every day. You got to do the work if you want to get in shape. Um, and I believe you call it the fallen state, which I, I believe we are. But I believe we're living in Sodom and Gomorrah. And so every day we have that temptation, and it's the devil. And like, let me use the gym as an example. You know, all those beautiful women walking around. Uh, you know, you look and look and look. And I believe, I believe we are born when we say the, born again when we say those words. But then it's a battle of good and evil. And I feel like every time you know you're doing wrong, and you make that decision, well, I'm just going to do it one more time. You're not born again anymore. It's almost no. like being sober, right? 
if you two days sober, you sober, but as soon as you go out and drink, you fall off the wagon, and that's how I see it. I believe we're not born again when we commit those sins, because yeah. we know it's wrong, and we do it, and then I believe we don't deserve to be born again. Does that make sense? Okay. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. I was thinking of something funny you said at the gym the other day. He's kind of funny, too. So I saw him on Monday. I'm like, hey, how you doing? How was your weekend? Oh, my wife and I had a rough time. I told her she was on thin ice, and I could see it cracking. <laughs> that was so funny, man. <laughs> so um, how many said they believe in God? Let me see. Oh, okay. Oh, this is so good. I don't know what to do with it. You believe in God? I do. I just, a thought was okay. kind of, oh, sorry. When you were saying, like, when you say out loud you believe in being saved, the thought that just kept repeating in my mind as everyone was sharing was just, we can say anything, but do you walk the walk that you talk? Like, right people on. talk the talk, but do you walk the walk? Like, are you living in a Christ-like way? Like, you know, that, I don't know. That's, that's just what kept repeating in my mind, kind of along the lines of what you said. So, and how do you know you believe in God? I think it's just something that you feel in every decision that you make and every, just every part of your being. I mean, that's what it is to me. It's like God is in all things. And, uh -huh. um, you know, what would God do <laughs> kind of a thing yeah. <laughs> in every situation. I heard that before. Yeah, so I don't know. I just, for me, it's just, uh, it's just more of a, a way that you come at everything in life. What do you think about this conversation right now about what do you believe? I think it's a really great thought-provoking conversation. Yeah. And I think it's amazing for everyone to get to really think about yeah. and to kind of answer that for themselves. That's right. Yeah. I want people to start thinking for themselves. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how many people do not think for themselves. It's like, I didn't notice when I was in a father's state that we were not thinking for ourselves. I really thought we were. But most people are not at all, but you just don't know it. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. In the, in the right here, Mark, what do you believe in? I believe in God. How do you know? Because to me, God is, I believe God is all these things people are saying, truth, doing the right thing, etc. cetera. And um, <clears throat> during tough times, during temptation, during things that like, Previously, I, I would fall or I would, I would do whatever the wrong thing is. I'm just willing to take whatever consequences come, and I do what's right, and I feel like that's what drives me. Those are your words. Um, so, yeah, that's why. And right behind you, the white tie. What do you believe in? I believe the children are our future. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, I don't know. These millennials are pretty messed up. That's true. You got to teach don't them the think way. How much of our future? And never let them become PC babies. Yeah. Absolutely. So they're starting to wake up now. So what do you believe? I believe they're starting to wake up. Oh, okay. And it's going to be biblical when when it comes yeah, to Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nick, you and I had this conversation last night on the plane, right? No. We did not. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad. What no. do you believe? Um. That, I, believe, I believe there's a way, like a Nick way out. Nick is my producer, just in case people wonder, who is Nick? Go ahead. I believe there's like a way out, like of, I don't know, the fallen state, I guess. I, I've heard it talked about, and it just speaks to me. I, I believe that it's possible. Oh, okay. All right. Did I ask you? And what do you believe? Uh, I don't know. You don't know what no. you believe? Uh -uh. Did you know before now you didn't know what you believed? I never really thought about it. You hadn't thought about it? No. Oh, okay. Is this your first time here? Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah. What's your name? Henry. Hey, Henry. I have a cousin named Henry. Oh, yeah. Henry Lee. Yeah. Uh, any questions for me? No. No? Okay. How did you hear about us? Uh, a few years back, uh, you did that video uh, with that Black Lives Matter girl, and you asked her, what do you people want? Yeah, that oh, was yeah. funny. So she hung up and since. ran. Yeah. Yeah, she got ran away. I'm like, what do y'all want? Yeah. What do you want? Yeah. They don't even know what they want. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Amazing. Thank you, man. Um, I saw your hand. Um, I was just going to respond to something. 
okay. uh, this lady was saying um, about uh, the feeling and attempting to walk the walk and not just have like the head knowledge of it, but have like an experience of it. Um, that it's by grace alone that all of that happens. It's by love. And it's impossible to experience any of that without Jesus. How do Jesus you know is that? the way and the truth and the life. How do you know that's true? Well, Jesus said it himself Where? in the Word, Where in the did Bible. He say it? In the Bible? Yes, he did. He said it in the Bible? I am the way, the truth, and the life, and none will get to the Father except through me. And you believe it? Yes. And why do you believe it? Uh, I believe in Jesus. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let me tell you why. I, so we were up at the uh, contents, Content of Character Conference. I spoke there yesterday. And uh, a couple of people were saying that you have to be saved, right? And that if you believe Jesus died for your sin and rose again and uh, died on the cross, all that good stuff, you will be saved. And they were like, as Esteban was saying, no, you've got to do it now because you don't know what tomorrow going to bring. You know, and, 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 and they're trying to get you saved, right? And so a lot of people have done that across the country. I think Christianity is a major religion around the world. And so a lot of people have done that. And, and, but what I notice is that it, they only, from what I can tell, they have only done it because somebody said it. Somebody read the Bible and said, confess Jesus with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you will be saved. And come on down and Accept Jesus. So they do it, right? And now they believe that they're saved. They just believe they're saved. But life is hell. And they know, and so life is hell for them who are saved. And then, but because somebody else said, well, we're all human. The flesh is weak. You can't help it. They believe that. And so they're locked into that. And then accepting that if you believe in God, that's enough, but you're going to suffer anyway. You're going to have all this stuff going on, right? And so somebody said that. They believe that. And then they say, well, you could be a son or daughter of God. You could be born again, and you sin. They believe that. And so as a Christian, read the Bible, whatever they do, they're still sinning, but because somebody said you could be a son or daughter of God and still sin, they have accepted that. You know what I'm saying? Um, can I say this? I like, I'm about to say so, but not your name. I'm not going to say your name. I'm talking to the camera. Uh, a good example is that I gave this talk yesterday, and after I was done, I went out into the hallway because we had to leave, and a bunch of people came out. And elderly people, these was old people. I've been wondering, where are the old people? So I spoke to a bunch of older people, not millennials. Maybe one or two millennials. And uh, they were saying, oh, I didn't know I messed up my family like that. Because I was saying how the mothers turned their children away from their fathers and the kids suffer. And they were like, oh, I didn't know I done that. I'm so sorry. My husband did this to me. And I'm like, but he didn't do it to the kids. He did it to you. And these people, nice people, very nice people, but th because they believe what somebody said, they're still suffering, they're still screwing up the family, and, but they think they can't help it because they have believed what somebody said. And they're still in this trap because they believe what someone said. And you never, ever, 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 and the thing about it, when the other preachers were up preaching, they were like, hey, man, praise the Lord. One preacher preached so hard and loud, and he was like, I'm, don't worry about me. I'm getting ready for church tomorrow. I'm like, you're killing me right now. <laughs> I mean, just down at it, right? But they believed it because somebody said it. And you can't live that. You shouldn't be living that way. You cannot believe because somebody said it, no matter who it is. Because that's not a real belief. That's a Satan belief. That's why you don't get better because you believe it because someone said it. Just because somebody, whether that's true or not, I explained about that whole story of what Jesus said. I mean, 
when they quote, come on down and accept Jesus, do you believe he died, right? That is a form of belief, but it's a fallen state belief. It really is. That's why you don't change from it. You don't learn from it. You don't grow from it because it's not the real belief. So it got me to thinking last night about belief. And I'm like, wow, that's so interesting. And I wonder, what did I believe? Wow, y'all waiting to hear, right? I just saw a hand, and then I'll tell you. James, did I see your hand too? No. Okay, just right here. Uh, well, you're, you're saying... Um, you're just believing it because some, someone said it? Right. But Jesus Christ said it in the Bible. Did you hear him say it? First John... Chapter no, three. Did you hear Jesus verse say it? Verse twenty-three. You. Nah, I'm not saying I he didn't it. say it. I read it, it in, in the Bible. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying that he didn't say it. I'm yeah. just asking, did you hear him say it? No, nah, I read it in the Bible. Right, and then you read it in the Bible, and you believe what you read, right? Yes. Okay, and did that help you? Yes. In what way? Hmm. Well, it's God that. In what way did it help you? In every way. In what way? <laughs> Through Jesus relax, Christ. Relax, y'all. You're not, it's not a test, really. Jesse, you keep saying Take relax. I'm, I'm chill. In what way? I'm just talking to everybody. Yeah. In what way did it help you when you read it and you believed it? Well, it's a continual <laughs> understanding like, oh, this is the way it helps me. It's, it's a never-ending help. How has it helped you? It's helped me learn to let go of things and... Uh, let go of what? You see a sinning. So you said. I mean... So you haven't let that go, right? Sure, in the past I've sinned a lot, sure. <laughs> so how I ain't done no sinning today. Yeah. Nah, but... Uh, it just is, it's something for you to just think about, right? No right or wrong, no F. It, I, need, I want, I'm encouraging you. You got to be an individual. Really. You got to be in the world, but not of it. You really do. And it can't happen. It's so interesting. You can literally be in the world with a protective bubble around you and not be of the world. Because the world is truly Satan's world and his children out there running things into the ground. I was looking at this, um, some uh, excerpts about the uh, so-called impeachment that's happening now, and they have these so-called experts on. They have no idea what they're talking about. I'm like, what? <laughs> they just make up stuff. They really don't know what they're talking about, but if you don't see that, you believe them. You really, but they literally, uh, any one of us to get up there and say the same thing, what they say, really? They have no idea what they're talking about, but they're called experts. And because they hook that title up to them, you'll believe them. Isn't that something? And so I didn't know we were this crazy. I did not know. I didn't know we as human beings were this dumb. We are dumb. No, we are. No wonder Jesus have extra coffee sometimes. He's like, bring me a large, extra large cafe mocha today. It's crazy what we believe, and I, and I have more to say, but I want to hear Will. Go ahead, Will. Um, well, this is in 1 John uh, 3.23. It says, and this is the, his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he has commanded us. So, right. I mean, God is commanding us to do these things. Right. And I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just asking you, what do you believe? That's all. I'm not saying yeah. you're wrong for what you believe or anything. I'm just telling you that we are dumb. Yeah, I agree. It's so amazing how we just take on stuff. Very much so. Yeah. That's why you got to be aware. That's why you stress awareness being right. so important. Absolutely. And awareness is from God. It's yeah, but how do you know that? Because he's the one who reveals it to you. How do you know that? Because it's not of yourself. It's like something new. It's how do you know that? Because it wasn't there in your experience in the past. And how do you know that? Because you didn't feel it. You <laughs> do you know that God it. does not want us dumb? Really. He wants his children to be insightful. Really. He doesn't want you to be in this lower level of consciousness. That's why he say pray without ceasing. 
because he wants you to always have his mindset because it's nothing like what you think the other stuff is. It really is so interesting. Yes, Mark. I forgot. You forgot? Yes. Okay. Right here, Joel, and then, did yeah. I see your hand? Okay. All right, then I'll make the big point, and then this would be my biblical question for this week. Yes, sir. So I actually just want to respond to Will about this. Um, just a question. Would you believe, like, so to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. So Jesus did good things, and, you know, it's basically telling us that we should do good things. But would you believe that we should do good things if it wasn't in the Bible, like if the Bible didn't tell you that, if the Bible actually told you that it has nothing to do with being good, would you believe that? Well, we're commanded to do everything in love. No, he said, no, if you had, if the Bible says something oh, else, would you? If the Bible said command and hate. The Bible doesn't say that, though. No, if it said, would you believe that? Well, there's no if, it does not say that. Have you read the Quran? There, there, there's. Have you read the Quran? Nah. Oh. I mean, a little bit of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just messing with you. And they believe it. That's right. Yeah. That's a good point. They believe we're infidels, worthy of death. Yeah. They believe that because somebody said it. Uh huh. And so, if you read the, well, I, I don't want to do an if with you. Yeah. All right. Right here. Well, we should take the, the word of God as, as that's, that's like, it's a road map. Like you said, it's a road map that points you back to God. Right. And it's not like you're going you're gonna to be doing these things. If, if, you're, if you're like being conformed to Christ's likeness, it's Christ in you that's going to be doing these good works. It's, it's, you're you're going to be serving others in love. You're, you're going to be... Uh, compelled to do these things out of love for your neighbor and could because you love them like Jesus Christ loves us which okay. is what he told us to do and you believe that yes 100 percent are you doing that yes okay serving um, my fellow man amazing yes bring me some water <laughs> no I'm kidding no I'm good yes sir And wisdom, for sure, and like a blurry spot because a lot of you know knowledge is just information until you know it's revealed and then it becomes wisdom to me. That's how I see it. Yeah. So there is like a dangerous place where it's easy just to believe because it makes sense. That knowledge makes sense, but it's not true. Uh, Nick would tell me that yesterday because he listened to some of the speakers, and he was like, "I, I don't know why I, I see things different now. I don't. I can see the knowledge. It's just knowledge. I don't want to see it that way, but that's the way I see it." It's just empty knowledge. It doesn't have anything in it. But it makes sense, though. It makes, what makes sense, sense. Like, you know, there's things that people say that's just information or knowledge, and it makes sense. It makes it sense as true. far as, yes, let's say the Bible, for example. Yes, the Bible does say it. Yes, the world is insane. But it's just empty knowledge, though. It doesn't do anything for you. Right. But it, it, right. But when you read it, which is true, it doesn't do anything it's for like you. If you're going you down it, to... The pot house. Right. And you ask me how you get there. Go down the road, right. make a left. The pot house is right on the corner. That's all it is. Right. But when you read it, you read it and it makes sense like, oh, I get that. But it hasn't, it hasn't entered into you because you it hasn't been revealed. Right. But I get why people believe the knowledge because it makes so much sense, like maybe intellectually. In your fallen state, yeah. Right. But it really doesn't make sense. Right. It really It just seems like it makes sense. <laughs> Anyway, wow. Oh, yeah, right here. I'm glad y'all waking up. And then I'm almost running out of time. The dead has come alive. Okay. I have something to say. Yes. <laughs> we are, listen, we're just fellowshipping. None of us better than the other one. Nobody's smart. Everybody's dumb. We're all dumb. Okay. <laughs> So I'm pondering on this. I'm pondering on what I what what do I believe? Yes. And I, now I know I'm a believer. I'm a believer in the spiritual realm. I am a believer because he, God made me a believer. Jesus Christ made me a believer. That's okay. why I, I'm I am a believer. Amazing. And this and there and then I also believe that there's a physical realm, not just the spiritual. Right. So I had to. Sh 
And thanks for reading that scripture because that that helped you to understand. Yes. Oh, okay. Amazing. Yes. Uh, amazing. <laughs> yes. What you said about when the, the pastor leads you to come to the altar to accept Christ and I said it was a process, they're planting the seed. They're planting they're planting the seed in you. What seed? It it would be the seed like we're gonna grow in Christ. So but it most would be a who believe that don't grow. Then they're stagnant. They're stagnant because they want to stay, they're lukewarm. They want to stay at, in one state. But when you receive but Jesus Christ. But most Christian would tell you that they want to grow. That's why they ran down to the front and accepted Jesus. Because they want to grow. And they accepted Jesus at 10 years old. Now they're 90. And their life is just as bad as it was at 10. But they wanted to grow. They didn't grow. Most of them are like that. Right. Because the word of God says um, a righteous man. Will fall seven times. But you that's, can't be that's righteous why, if you're sinning. Well, that's why I said we, we are but either going to choose sin, sin or salvation. We're choosing sin or salvation. That's why, according to what Peter spoke on the day of Pentecost, according to Acts 2.38, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. We're taking on his name to repent right. of our sins and grow. And you go believe forward. that? Yes, I do. Why? Because without baptism, you Why cannot you see the kingdom that? of heaven. Because it's written, it's God's word in the Bible. So you believe it because the Bible said it. Well, it's God's word. You believe it because the Bible said it. It's God's word. Yes. You believe it. Yes. Your wife trying to make you say yes. <laughs> She's like, yes, yeah, say yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. This is so much fun now. The time is up. You got to come alive. I, w I was told something uh, when I was a much younger man in my early 20s, yeah. and it hit me really hard. And uh, this older gentleman told me, he said, actions speak much louder than words. And I think that's really important. I, I would also say it speaks much louder than Twitter as well. So for everybody <laughs> out there right, who's, man. you know, and feelings, as, you know, yes. feelings, words, I think it's our actions and our responsibility. And uh, people mentioned being Christ-like or the teachings of Christ, that's something that, um, that we really uh, find important in our life as well, is you know, leading as an example, as leaders, and being responsible. Right being responsible for what we do, our actions. It's not the words that are important, you know, or what people feel about your words. You know. And uh, Twitter. Amazing. Big Twitter. So. <laughs> tweet, tweet. Um, what, boy? <laughs> no, I'm gonna, yes. So uh, with what this gentleman was just describing about uh, going to the altar and doing your thing, Jesus spoke directly uh, in a parable uh, about uh, the sower and the seeds, where uh, people who hear the word immediately and they spring up and they're like, oh my gosh, yes, Jesus is Lord. But then very quickly, they fall right back into their old ways. Did it happen to you? And, uh, no. And, but, and, <laughs> that, and that is, uh, that's... That's described as seeds that were thrown among some thorns, right. some and uh, and and uh, they quickly got brought right back into the world because the seeds didn't go down deep, right? And he talks about a couple of different versions of this. At what point are you making? Uh, I'm talking about we shouldn't be surprised when you know if Christians aren't changing whenever they go up to the altar and, and say why this. not? Because they're one or other version of the seeds. It's Jesus told us that this was going to happen. Are you surprised you, once you went through that, that you did not change? Once I what, went through... Went down and accepted Jesus. Mm -hmm. Am I surprised that I didn't change? Right. Uh, well, I, I'm always changing. To what? More recently, in recent years, you know, to conforming like, to Christ's likeness. What does that mean? I love, uh, in this club, there's so many special words. Especially saying too. No, yeah. not just you. I'm thinking about something yesterday. Christ is our really what got me yeah. thinking was yesterday's event. Yeah. Well, Christ is our example, and we're we should be coming more and more like Jesus Christ. Right. So that's what's be. happening. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Right here it says I have not heard, and then I'll come over here, guys. Then we got to end it. Yes, sir. I think it's pretty simple. Um, it seems like. Um, the feeling that you would expect to have when you go down there and you confess your sins and you're supposed to be saved. I think that if there was a little bit, 
change there where if they instruct you to let go of anger because you're not going to know love until you do that, then you're not really going to know what love is towards you either, right? That's for sure. I mean, so really you don't know what it's supposed to feel like until you let go of anger in general. So you expect to feel that, but I didn't really feel any of that until recently when I gave up anger. You overcame your anger? Yeah. By doing what? <clears throat> well, by knowing that, you know, I can't know love without it and I can't carry on without love. Did you go and forgive? Yes. Yeah. Who did you forgive? Well, <laughs> it's a, um, I'm in some stuff with my wife. We're you have a, a wife? I have a wife. We're in the middle of an issue, but, um, but yeah. Well, so, can, can, are you able to say what the issue is? It's uh, not, if it's not too private. We're in the midst of a divorce. So it's, oh, that is an but issue. But I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm, a big issue. <laughs> yeah. And so you don't want to divorce? Not anymore, no. At first you did? Yeah, we were both born again in this period of time when we've been split apart. So things have come to light. Um, she was born again too? Yes. And you were? Yes. And so can't you just stop the divorcing? We can, but she doesn't really trust her own thoughts on the whole thing right now. So she's kind of letting God show her. So show just her what? Show her the path because she doesn't trust what she thinks. Well, why don't you tell her? She's not listening. <laughs> no, but I'm just doing my thing. I'm, you know, trying to stay the path. It's obviously a very uh, drastic life change, but I think giving up anger was the, the moment you want to feel when you go down to the front of the church. Yeah. You feel that when you understand letting go of anger and then you actually let it go right on you, know? you have kids um i have a son but not with her um i had very tragic past life with drugs and whatnot so um but he's back in my life now so, so you have a son with your wife no i don't have a son with my wife oh with someone else yeah oh okay yeah. i got you yeah he's 10. So. well i wish you well with that man yeah thank you I appreciate uh it. how long have you been married we were married two years but we were together for seven uh, seven, hey. seven. That's amazing to wake up in the midst of a divorce. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, but I don't have any anxiety, which is the strangest thing. Good about any of it. I'm just letting it go and carrying on. You know? That's the way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, right on, man. <laughs> that you ever go? Uh, let me see your hands again. All right, let me take here. You have a question too, Daryl? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Zika. And then there, and here, and, and everywhere else. Yes. You know, I don't think that he's entirely wrong in the sense that I think it's... Who? Will. Oh, okay. In the sense of, like, I just say being wrong. saved again. <laughs> I just said no one's wrong yet, right? Okay. <clears throat> Walking down the... Or however you described it, going and being saved, I think it's a step... It, it doesn't do anything, but it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, how is that? In a sense that, you know, there's something you may realize or you, you feel a call, so you accept the call, but nothing changes, but yet you, you still... You feel a call? Like, you feel like it's time to make the change, but you can't make the change. You've been called? I think so. You be like... <laughs> what, a call to do what? Well, you just feel like, I got to get it together. My life is a mess. So you were called to get your life together? Right. But nothing changes. It's true of what you're saying. It's like nothing changes until you do the proper steps. But I was still walking in the, the right direction when I was called. Even I was doing the fake things. It's all fake stuff because they tell you that you're saved and you're, you know, you're renewed, which that's a lie, but it's still a step in the right direction, okay. I believe. Amazing. All right. Yes, we're real short. Oh, no, let me take the guy in the green first. Uh, world. He, got him. he has a mic already. Real fast. Yeah, okay. no, um, I think it's also risky to, like, it's, you know, people get f stuck in this dichotomy about faith and, and what is it, uh, works, right? Um, but people get lost in works, too. Like, I know a lot of church-going people who, like, give out hot dogs to the homeless who don't care about Jesus at all, but they're just going there to get free hot dogs. And they're like doing it because dogs. it feels good for them. They feel like, oh, we preached the word to 100,000 people today. But then... They're not good fathers at home. They're not good husbands to their wives because they haven't gotten rid of, they haven't done the most fundamental thing. It's like you can't do steps two to 12 if step one is getting rid of that anger and forgiving. You know, it's like you, you went ahead and you did all these other steps, but it's like you're still not going to, in a sense, meet the mark of a true Christian yeah. because you're, you're doing all this other stuff with anger in your heart. And so you're not going to do it for the right reasons or the right way. You're going to take care of a neighbor 
but not your closest neighbor, your wife and your family. Those are your closest neighbors you're supposed to be taking care of. All right. So, Amazing. Yeah. Whew. Relax, Jesse. Yes, Will. <laughs> and then Francisco. I'm looking at the clock so, and I want to tell I gotta you. I got to respond to him and him now. Okay, make it, it really it, short. A, a real short. Time, yeah. Incredibly short. It's okay. not by works that we are saved, but it is by grace and grace alone that we are saved. If by works we were saved, what then Jesus Christ died for nothing. What does that mean? It means that God's love is what saves us. It's How his do you grace. know that? Well, it says it in the Word. How do you know that's true? Well, Jesus told us and other men of God. But uh, responding to what <laughs> Joel said. Um, you got to love and, Will. And, I love and, you, Will. Love you too, Jesse. And uh, the beginning question, what do you believe in, right? Well, No, not what you well, believe well, in. Jesse, I didn't ask follow. what you believe in. You said, I said what, what do, do you, you believe, believe in? I wrote it down. I did not say what you believe in. Yes, you did, Jesse. Well, what do you believe is what I said. All right, okay, well, right? Jesse. Did I say that? Yeah. Th this I didn't is, say uh, in. That's besides the point, Jesse. Oh, what do you believe? <laughs> the point right, that, not what you believe in. The point that I'm making is faith comes from hearing the word, right? Yeah. That's what the Bible tells us. And, and what's happening to these people whenever they're going down to the altar... And they're, they're so when it says whole, faith Jesse, come from uh, hearing the word, what does that mean to you? It means whenever you sit in a congregation, whenever you hear the word of God, the Bible preached aloud by a, by a minister, by a preacher, whatever, by a reverend, that faith, it, it comes from hearing the word. And so these people, they're... That they're, is so deep. They're getting, they're getting like this, this like resurgence, yet, this fuel. So wrong. This fuel of faith. Now I'm saying that's wrong. Jesse, come on. I'm going to give you an example they're, in a minute. They're getting this you faith. You have just brought it home for me. And they're coming all down to the altar because the faith has been built up in them from hearing the word. That's just emotion. Okay. All right. So faith comes from hearing the word. Okay. From hearing someone preach, talk about the Bible. Right, you do mean that. The word of God from Preaching the word of God from the Bible. Okay. Amazing. I got it. Yes. You know, I used to be just like this. <laughs> just like this. He really did. I, he was. I was, uh, I had all the Bible so bad. And whenever you call me, I'm like, I'm busy. And he so was just like that. Well, I was, not I was not just that you're like, bad, Will. You're good. Just like this young man, you know, I'd rather have be like that than to be a gang member or something, you know, or a killer or something. So it's not negative. So whatever you believe is who you are. You're going to be that person as, as you are. Right. And so it's not until I learned to, to let that stuff go because it kind of sounds crazy. And uh, what you think is who you, who you are. And, and uh, you know, so I had to let that stuff die. And so... So I, I got to the point to where I didn't know what anything was. And then I kind of, I was able to find myself. So not until that point. Not until I was willing to let it go. Because as, 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 as a tight grip you have on it, you can't let it go, it has you. And then you'll be unable to find yourself. So, so that's why I asked, if I asked what you believe in, I didn't want to put the end part. I just want to know what do you believe, all right? Uh, uh, right here, and then right here, and I got it in. I mean, all this stuff about going up and confessing Jesus and getting it from a priest and hearing about it, I mean, all this stuff is just refuted by Paul himself. Like, he came to the Lord as he was going to persecute people. He got blinded by himself, and people wanted to kill Christians. It was converted right there. Yeah. I mean, and that's in the Bible. Amazing. Yes, sir. Uh, so all this talk about the Bible says this and Jesus said that and this verse says this and all that stuff. Not, and I'm not just referring to this, what's going on here right now. I'm talking like it, this is this kind of craziness is kind of what turned me off of traditional Christianity or as it as it's been going on right now because I think all that stuff is just really it, it's there, it's nothing more than like a helpful tool I guess to make you reveal like make to reveal what's already inside of you like the Bible is just as good as a Dr. Seuss book you know um, it's it, I, the way I've come to kind of understand it is like it's it should just be like a reference guide really and, Absolutely. Yeah, and the same thing with Jesus. Like, it's irrelevant to me 
whether or not Jesus was real or not, it's really irrelevant to me. It's, 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 and like really nitpicking everything he says, it's really irrelevant if it's not kind of igniting that thing inside you that you already know. I don't know. It's like that, sort of like a revelation. Like there's, when you, I think for me personally at least, the correct way, quote unquote, to read the Bible is your, your reaction should be like, oh, I already knew that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And all these craziness going on with what does this mean and the Bible's this because it's true because the Bible said this or because Jesus said that. I think all that's just craziness that's getting in the way of correctly, in my opinion, using, that, using those as a tools to reignite what you already know. Amazing. So, this is me. so much fun. Aren't you like having a hoot nanny of a time? I'm totally having a hoot nanny of a time. So how many people believe that faith come by hearing like when someone is preaching and stuff or talking about the Bible, you, that's how faith comes. Don't be scared. Yes? Are you saying yes? Will you say yes? Yes. That faith comes by hearing the word from the Bible. That's not the only way, but it does come. Yes. Okay. How many people believe that? Don't be scared. It's not a test. Raise your hand, man. You know you believe it. Okay. <laughs> Feel that. You believe that too? I'm sorry? Yeah. Let me tell you a very interesting uh, experience. And then I got to end. So yesterday, Nick almost got saved twice at least. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. They were telling that you, you believe in Jesus, Lord and Savior, right? You need to confess it now. Nick like, well, can I wait till later? <laughs> No, you got to do it now. Oh, James, did you, did you, you had a question online or something? No, I wanted you to remember to answer your last week's biblical question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Amazing. After this, I might not answer that. I may let y'all smoke on it a little bit longer. But, so Nick, really nice people though. It's not a put down to them. Christian, really kind to us, and just really nice. It's just that uh, it was interesting so we were riding in the, with the driver, and I let Nick sit in front. I sat in the back, right, so that I can, whatever. Um, and so they were getting Nick saved, but Nick wouldn't accept it. And they were so nice in it, and Nick still wouldn't accept it. And, um, and I thought about something Nick had told me a while back. So some of you know Nick was an atheist before, my producer. He used to be an atheist when he lived in Canada. And so, according to him, if I'm not telling it right, you remind me, Nick said that when President Trump ran for president, for a while he was believing all the things that the people were saying. He was racist, he was this, he was that. He believed that. But then, after a while, he realized that, wow, they so mean to him. Why are they so mean to him? Why are they so nasty? And when he wondered about that, it made him realize that there was evil. He, he, he was like, oh, that's evil. Evil does this. And then he thought, well, evil is this. There must be God. And that's how he found God. That's how he returned to God. It wasn't by hearing it, the word. It was by revealing to him. And, and I thought that is, such, <clears throat> that is such an amazing way. That's the way it's supposed to happen. From within, not without. You ain't going to never get no faith when somebody preaches the Bible to you. You get, you believe, but it's a fallen state belief. It's an intellectual belief. And that's why once you believe that person that tells you you're saved because you believe Jesus, that's all you go. That's all the further you go. Now you got to help accept all the other crap. You're a sinner. You're going to sin the rest of your life because you have accepted belief from without rather than from within. And you can always tell when people accept belief from without instead of from within. Because once you see it from within, you don't have to look for another preacher. You don't have to follow nobody. You don't have to be running from radio host to radio host because you got it. Really, you got it and you just start growing from within. But if you learn this intellectually, you're still going from anybody that sounds good. 
anybody that has some more little new information, anybody that presents it in a good, countable way, you'll run from that. You'll leave me and go to them. And then you hear somebody else say it, you'll leave that person and go to them. And you're really all excited about the person and the way that they speak rather than seeing it for yourself from within. Really, you're never going to get it just by hearing somebody preach the Bible. You'll get it intellectually, but you're subject to that person now or to someone else preaching the Bible. That's why if they say, oh, faith come by here and hearing the word and you believe it, you got it, right? Now they're going to say, well, you can't help us sin. Or you're going to accept when they say Jesus is God. Whatever they say now and whatever anybody else says that sound like that, they got you. And that's why your life is screwed up. You got to live from within now. The kingdom of heaven is a brand new location. And it was created by Christ. He came and he created a secret place inside. And everything will be revealed to you. I believe in nothing and nobody. I don't know how it changed, but it changed. Because I used to be that way too, run from preacher to preacher. Anybody that sound good or look good, I would go to them because I had not found what I was looking for. I, I don't believe in anything because I can now see, right? And I'm just guided by what I see. That's why I have a wait and see attitude now. I don't need to be all caught up with anybody or anything. Once you are truly born again, you don't live by this crap that's going on in the world. You'll be in it, but not of it. You will live by the light of God inside of you. You don't need another preacher to tell you something else because you now have it. You know just what the preacher know if the preacher has received it from God. You will too. You know, God is not going to pre treat the preacher any better than he will treat you. He loves you. And the only thing that the preacher is supposed to do is to point you back to yourself where the kingdom of heaven is located. He's not supposed to have you running to him and from preaching to preaching. But if you don't have it for yourself, uh, you, you will be running from place to place still looking. But you have it in you. The kingdom of heaven is in. I don't believe in all this stuff anymore. That's why I tell you, when you hear it, let it go in one ear and out the other. Don't hold on to it. Other, it's just knowledge. And you'll get stuck on knowledge, and all it's doing is building your ego. For anyone to think that you could be a son or daughter of God and still sin, you've got to be crazy. And God is not of sin. How do you think you got his, you have his nature and you still sin? But you believe that because you believe the first person when they said it and they got you. You're being controlled and don't know it. You're brainwashed and don't know it. Disagree with me, somebody. I agree. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's so amazing. Yes, Mark. I agree. I was just going to add that if you look at it intellectually even, you're pro like proposing that you say these words, you come down, you read this book, you're going to trick God. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you're going to have hatred in your heart, but you say these words, or you quote this Bible, you act this way in front of people. And like um, he was saying, you're, you're mean to your wife or something, you know, behind closed doors. You're not going to trick God. You know, but it, what I, importantly, what I really want you to know, once you wake up, once you enter the kingdom of heaven within, just relax and live now. Really, because it takes away all your ego, and the ego makes you think you could do something that you know something, right? And that starts to destroy that ego, which is a lie, which is the nature of Satan. And you really just find yourself living and doing what's in front of you to do. And, it, and you start to grow, your mind is being renewed. And so all these old ways that we've been taught in that ego state, he will renew your mind, take that away from you. Just be patient. Don't keep looking outside anymore. Just be aware of yourself. It's inside. When you find that, you know you don't have to look outside. I don't even have to tell you that, but I'm going to tell you. Don't look outside anymore. You know as much as anybody else because you get it from the same source from within. Really. And he'll, he'll renew your mind and you'll just live. You'll speak up, but you won't hate. You will see what to do. You won't have fear about it. You don't have to plan. As you were saying about the divorce, you know what? Just wait and see how it works out. It will work out one way or the other, and you'll be fine with it, with it because your father resolved it. Really. And he's taking care of you. It's such an interesting thing. 
And so it's just too bad that the intellect, because of that fallen state, you believe in the intellect, and so many people caught up with what somebody else said. We are not supposed to be teaching one another. We're supposed to be examples of what's inside. Christ, and we'll mention, I think, Christ was our example, right? He even said, it's not me. It's from within. It's not me. Why do you worship me? It's not me. It's my father. He said that over and over, yet they worship Christ. He said, don't worship me. They worship him anyway because the intellect made them believe he was saying something else. I don't know anywhere in the Bible where Christ said, confess Jesus, y'all, come on down here and accept it. <laughs> Is that in the Bible, Will? <laughs> See, that's a made up thing. He point you back to the Father that's in you. All the thing he said, you got to let the ego go. You can't be wrong. You got to admit you're wrong. You got to repent. Forgive, but then you enter into the kingdom of heaven. That makes sense? So stop looking here and there and everywhere. If somebody have you looking at all these different places, they're deceiving you. It's inside. Everything you're looking for is that secret place on the inside. And the world can't get in. Only God can draw you in. It's a secret place. From the, it's hidden from the children of the lie. They can't get in there. That's why when you tell them about it, it's all like you're speaking in tongues. They can't understand it. All right? Amazing. You don't, but don't, don't believe me. You need to see it for yourself, all right? Just let it go in one and out, ear it out the other. Because that's why I ask, what do you believe? You have to be careful. Don't believe any of this stuff. Don't believe it. He will reveal it to you. You want to be able to see. I once was blind, but now I see. Really, once you see it, it's amazing. Did I see your hand? Yes. Um, I, I'll be quick. Um, so you say that it's the ego that's puffing up. Yes. Because when knowledge is presented, people believe into it because it's the ego. Yes. But my question is, why are they believing it? Is it because it's making sense? Because they're in a fallen state. And the moment they popped out of the mama's womb, they fell into that believing stuff. Mama teaches them everything. Mom and dad, mom, say hello to the stranger. You ever be walking down the road, you're a little kid, and somebody said hi, you don't want to say hi? And your mama like, come here, boy, say hi. You lose it. But doesn't it, but isn't there also another thing of the fact that it makes sense? Because I, I feel like the real it deception. Make sense. Intellectual knowledge well, well, like, doesn't make sense. Well, for example. The like, shadow is empty. Say if, it makes sense say that if, Johnny fell out the tree. It's just right. a physical thing that happened. Well, what, let's just say 7-Eleven is up the street to the right. Right. And somebody tells you 7-Eleven is up the street to the right. You believe them, so you go. But let's just say 7-Eleven is down the street to the left. But that's the truth. But when they told you that 7-Eleven was up the street to the right, it made sense, so you went. But well, it was a lie. A, that's not something you believe in. It was just an instruction that right. they gave you. Right. Like the Bible is just a, a road map back to where you should be looking, what to right. do and not to do, right? But it's just a road map to where you should look. Here's what happened when you don't. Here's what happened when you do. But look within. The kingdom of heaven is then. Well, I think, well, but which instead I'm of that just too. taking this road map and using it as a map, intellectual map, Right. They hold on to the map and they make the map the word of God. Right. And that is stuck. Well, because the word, like, Will is, like, you know, I'm not agreeing with, you know, what he said. But I'm not, you can, the I'm word, not going to fire you. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, when you read it at face value, it does make sense. Like, oh, you know, believe in God, he, said he died for your sins, and you should believe in him and have faith. All that stuff makes sense, but it's not necessarily, you know, wisdom yet for you. But it makes what do you mean sense, by though. it makes sense? But I think, like, for example, the people are believing into the knowledge stuff because it makes so much sense. That it makes they sense. Just, what do you mean it makes sense? It makes sense that, you know, um, that they could see it to be true, but they don't know it for themselves that it's so true. So does like, it for make example, sense that you could be a son born again of God, brand new nature, and that you can sin? No, it doesn't make sense. But to them, it makes sense who would believe that. Well, well right. But well, like, for example, you can say, like, um, forgive your mother and you'll be free. Right. right. But, you know, that's knowledge until somebody, you know, until it's revealed to somebody themselves. So it's still knowledge and information. 
Yeah, but don't hold on to it though. Right. Because you shouldn't go and forgive unless you see for yourself that you do. But it makes sense that you said it. It makes sense that. I don't oh, know what the boy talking about makes sense. But it makes sense. <laughs> no, like, what does it make mean sense? by makes sense? Hold on with the mic. It's, it's you ever heard of Joel? You know who he is? No. That's Joel, my audio engineer. He's slow. Hi, Joel. <laughs> I just, I think when he's sense? saying, I think what he's saying is, it makes sense to him. It means it's logical, like it intellectually, it computes. Oh, okay. Like two plus two equals four. It's like it just oh, I fits. Got you. It comes together. Oh. But where they get deceived is that they believe into something they don't know to be true yet, but it still makes sense to them. It's logical sense. It's like she said, two plus two is four. But until just because somebody told you it's four, but you didn't do the equation yourself then you're not going to see it. Right. But I oh, think okay. that's where people get deceived is that they believe into it because it does make sense. What are you saying? You know, it makes sense. Oh, if you believe into the word and, you know, you have faith, you know, it makes sense and it sounds good, but that's where the deception is because but how come when it, they're not truly they letting it be revealed. Change, then what happens? You said what? If it made sense to believe the Bible like that and then you believe into it and nothing changed, why everything else makes sense? You still can sin. You still all this other stuff. Well, that's where the deception is because it made sense to them, but where they went wrong is that they didn't let it be revealed to them. Oh. So it makes sense though. Like I see what there's like. Oh, I get that. That makes sense. But because I didn't experience for myself, now I'm just believing on somebody else's experience. That's the best I can do. Explain it. I ain't got nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> The problem is no one is supposed to be teaching you the Bible. Let no man teach you. We're supposed to be examples. You're supposed to be, the people were able to look at Christ in those days and see that he was coming from the right place. There was something about him and they believed it. And because they believed it, they were able to believe in the same God that he believed in. He was an example. He didn't go around trying to teach them. Does that make sense, Will? Just a quick yes or no. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. He wasn't teaching. You, even with your kids, you're not supposed to teach your kids, right? You're supposed to be an example. So when they see the parents, they're going to see Christ in them. And in that light, that's going to keep them on the right track. Instead of seeing the darkness in the parents, they see the light. Because kids are already smart and innocent, and you just leave them alone and be a good example They'll be smarter than Natty going north when they grow up. And the world can't deceive them then. But the moment you start teaching them, you're taking them away from the Holy Spirit. Now they'll learn it in the physical. And then they can be deceived by the world when they go to school and everywhere else. All right. Last word. And nobody, don't raise your hand. <laughs> Suffer until next week. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was going to say, based on all this, uh, that it seems to me that sinners require faith as an exercise, while people who have been revealed don't require faith. They just are. If that makes sense. Yes. It's so amazing. You're right. Once you wake up, once he wakes you up, you just are. You just be. You become a living being. That's what happens. And you're not into all this madness and all this stuff that's going on in the world. And a lot of Christians don't realize, they don't know that the kingdom of heaven is within. And that you can't read a Bible and be born again. Only God can cause you to be born again. Confessing Jesus doesn't make you be born again. Nick believed because he was able to see from within. Oh, there must be a, a God then. And now you got it. You know what I'm saying? But that don't happen to a lot of people because they don't, they don't look within. They don't question. They just hear knowledge and hold on to the knowledge and one, thing, one just bad thing leads to another one. That's why you can't argue with them because they, intellectually they're locked in and they're not ready to see the truth. So you have to let them suffer. Love them, don't hate them, but let them suffer. That makes sense? All right. I should get a good offer today, offering. That was a lot of work. Uh, so I did, the biblical question last week was, was Christ created? But after last night and this morning, I'm not going to answer that. You need to see it for yourself, right?
because you, you find yourself looking to me to answer everything. God will show you. He really will. And I want you to become sons and daughters of God. I don't want to be your teacher. That's why we fellowship. Because I, I can't teach you. Only the Holy Spirit can teach you the truth. Because only God knows the truth. All right? Okay. Uh, what are you thinking about all this? Yes. Um, I'm really absorbing and um, I'm just being here. Yeah. Listening. Well, I'm glad you came, I really man. appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. All the way from Vegas. Have you ever won money in a slot machine? Uh, we don't play. We don't gamble. Oh, y'all yeah, so holy. <laughs> we, we don't. They're so holy. They don't gamble. Yeah, well, no. no. Had, we're not I don't holy. We're not I hate holy. losing pity, man. Yeah, yeah. It's just we work really hard for our money, so I'm That's not going right. to give it away. Yeah. We, I totally agree, man. We work too hard. 100%. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, just think about what we've talked about. You know, let it go in one ear and out the other one. And um, it's going to be amazing. Really. And you are growing without realizing it. And stop looking here to there to there to everybody that sounds good, right? Because once you wake up, you can relax. He is working on you. He is renewing your mind. He's taking away all the stuff. He's, all the bad habits are being taken away from you. So if you happen to smoke one more joint, you know, you don't want to. <laughs> and you wait for a week and you're like, Lord, it's Friday night. I worked hard all week. And see, just like, well, one more joint. One more joint won't hurt. It's Friday night. You haven't done it in two weeks. <laughs> and you're like, no. And then you go over and look at the weed. <laughs> and the weed start talking real loud. You're like, no. Uh, right. I'm telling you. And you look at it. And so it's Friday night, and at 9, about 9 o'clock, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to smoke this joint. <laughs> Don't judge yourself. All right, God is fine with one more time. All right? But just don't, don't have an opinion about it. Don't judge yourself. Let it go in one ear and out the other, and eventually it'll be all gone. You would not have the desire. It's all spiritual, and there's nothing we can do about anything. We're really not in control of anything. And when you wake up, you're really going to see that. All right? Thank you all so much. That was amazing. <laughs>